Has anyone ever told you that your life is what you make it? Well, they're, they're right. It's true. That's very, very true. Your life is what you make it. I'm going to read you a piece of poetry that I heard um, on one of the videos that I'm watching from Wise Quotes, okay? And the video itself, I'll post it down below if I can find it. And it talks about how to jump into new parallel realities that shape your destiny, okay? This is, and it's, it's so amazing. Now listen to it. It says, you are the architect of your own reality. The possibilities are infinite. You can create what it, whatever it is that you want to create, okay? So every action you create, creates a reaction. So that is basically a new variety of reality, just like losing weight, okay? So in my journey, I lost 75 pounds. Now, I could have gone either way. I could have lost five pounds and then gained it back. I could have maybe stopped midstream. I could have stopped in the middle of my um, my weight loss and just left by the wayside and continued on as I was. Or I could have continued to take the medications that were making me overweight. Okay, now don't forget, in my journey, I went from, I think it was 130 pounds, if maybe even 125, and I went up to 200 pounds with the medications, but I was sick, I was sick, I had heart problems, I had high blood pressure, I had all sorts of issues, okay, I had vertigo, I lost a lot of my eyesight, I wasn't able to walk properly, if I would have given up halfway, my reality would be a lot different than it is right now. And that's what I'm talking about. And I tell this to everybody. I tell this to my friends, my family, my children. Your reality is what you make it and the effort that you put into it. If you say, yes, I want to change my life, and you don't do anything, you don't move in the direction to change your life. If you're in a bad relationship and you say, I want to have a happy relationship, but you don't put the effort in to change that relationship, it's not going to change. It might stay the same. It might get worse. It might start to change and then revert back. It's the same thing with weight loss. I could have stopped midstream. I could have said, you know what? It's too much work. I don't want to do it. I could have continued to gain weight. I could be a lot sicker now. I could even possibly have crossed over to the next realm. But I chose to be strong and I chose to take up the battle okay and I chose to take my reality in a new direction instead of having a defeatist attitude or instead of being um, angry about what happened to me in my life I chose to change it as as the poetry said you are the architect of your own reality you create whatever it is that you want to okay? create so I just thought that was really, really important to do a video on because I'm dealing with this at this point in time, okay? So basically, if you give up halfway, you're not going to get the results that you could possibly achieve. You know, the, the possible results are infinite. There are so many different possibilities. And I did a video. I did a video on my healing journey, and I think I called it um, Possibilities, Infinite Possibilities. So what I want to talk about is the fact that our emotions can actually push us in, the, in a direction that isn't a direction that we would want to go, okay? If you choose a certain reality, then you're going to live that reality. You're going to put it into the universe, and the universe is going to give you that reality. If you're always angry, then you're going to encourage anger into your life. You're going to encourage people who create that type of tension, and you might even bring more angry people into your circle of energy, okay? But if you choose to find your balance. If you choose to find your balance and you choose to get your life on track, okay, and you choose to go in a direction that is going to bring you peace and serenity, then that is in, indeed the message that you're putting into the universe. You're asking for that peace and that balance in your life, and that is what you're going to attract. They say it all the time, as above, so below, as above, so below. What you think, you can manifest. And so if you're thinking negative thoughts all the time, you're going to manifest negative thoughts, okay? And this is where I run into problems with my kids. <laughs> so now we're going to get real. So my, I, I have a daughter that, um, you know, I worry about because she travels. And so I'm constantly sending her messages that, like, be careful about this, be careful about that, be careful. And she says to me, she said, Mom, stop it. <laughs> You're just, you're putting it in the universe and so it's going to happen. Just stop doing it. 
And I was, I like, you know, it's like old dogs die hard, right? <laughs> it's like, like just, I didn't really stop. <laughs> I continue to worry and I continue to put it into the universe instead of saying, you know, everything's going to be fine. I would say, be careful. Don't drive on that road. The roads are bad. Don't go there. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't go getting involved in this. Don't blah, 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 blah. Right. The mother in me was kind of like going overboard. Right. And my daughter says, Mrs. Mom, stop it. You're putting it into the universe. And now I understand. Okay, so if you're listening, sweetie, I understand. It's starting to sink. It's starting to sink in. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You really can. So, it's called reality transferring. Okay, and that is the cur the the third step or the third concept of um, a pendulum a pendulum swinging. Okay, it's it's basically it's a system of thought that is brought about that is going to absorb that energy and put it into all areas of your life. It's like that pendulum is constantly swinging back and forth, right? Back and forth. And that can manifest in politics, religion, culture, personal relationships that are fueled by that type of energy. And if you're fueling it with negative energy, you're going to manifest negative energy in your relationships, in your belief patterns, in whatever it is that you believe in. Okay, and so what we're seeing, we're seeing this take place now in our world now, and we're starting to see that there was a period of time where there are two warring factions, and then other people get involved, other people get involved, other cultures get involved, other religions get involved, and they choose a side, they choose a side, and that is manifested by their energy their energy they're putting that energy out there and so they're manifesting that in their environment and so you know it's kind of scary it's kind of scary we see protests and we see um things that are happening like that and the protests turn negative instead of having um a belief system that is bringing about peace and harmony to a certain faction okay they're choosing to revel or revel in a uh, negative energy in kind of like aggressive energy, forceful energy, okay? And so that's gonna manifest force and that's gonna that's going to manifest that type of negative energy in themselves, in the group of people. They're if you notice when you're um, if you've ever watched a protest or a riot, okay, the energy builds, the energy builds, and the more negative energy that's put into that protest, the more aggressive that protest becomes, and the more negative that protest, and then it, it possibly, and could very well, cross over into a violence, okay? And so you have to be very careful of those energies that you're not encouraging those energies. You're not um, providing an outlet for those negative violent energies okay and you will absorb the energy of people around you and i used to work in behavior modification with with kids so we're going to get you back uh with children and you know kids are like they're like a sponge. They will soak up the energies around them and they will manifest that in different ways, okay? So we had um, a bubble. You have a personal bubble, okay? And even when I was doing behavior modification with the kids that I was teaching, um, that personal bubble, if, if the child would cross over into your personal bubble, you had to give them a consequence of that, okay? If they were crossing into your bubble to get your attention, to kind of like say something, and they were constantly, then you had to say, okay, um, basically, I will give you the attention you seek if you don't cross that personal bubble. And there were different ways that we did it. I mean, I'm just kind of trying to, trying to synopsize it. I'm trying to make it like simple to understand, right? So there has to be a consequence of an action. Okay, and that's what we're talking about, is there will be a consequence of um, and, a, and a reaction. If you give an action, you're going to get a reaction, okay? You're going to get back what you give, right? It's that, that type of, um, that pendulum swings one way, but it also swings back the other way, okay? So you have to be prepared for the reaction you're going to get if you give a particular action, and that's what basically I'm talking about is that you know there is this wave of success okay it's a state of consciousness where everything seems to fit perfectly 
okay? Everything's fitting perfectly. If you're going through this wave of success in your life, that means that your life is going in a way where you feel confident, you feel motivated, and you feel fulfilled, and you're able to attract those opportunities and positive people and positive opportunities into your life, okay? You cultivate this positive mindset. You believe you're worthy of achieving what it is, your goals, your your um, your values and your beliefs are guiding you in the direction where you're going to achieve what it is that you're hoping to achieve, okay? You visualize achieving your goals. You, you gain that balance in your life. So what you need to do is avoid unnecessary uh, conflict where you bring those negative energies into your life. And this has happened to me so many times in my life, so many times in my life. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. So there is a thing called induced transition, okay, which is basically the process of moving from one variation of that pendulum swinging to another according to your will. So that is intentional. That is an intentional action on your part to create that balance in your life, and that is important to do. You can't give off negative energy and expect to get positive energy back. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And it's going to escalate into violence or aggression. So it's not a good thing. So when you do this, when you do this induced transition, okay, it talks about using your, in your intention and your energy to create a reality that you desire. You want change, then you have to reflect that in your thinking, in your actions, in your behavior. If you want positive change, you have to reflect that. It's just like the child that I would teach in the behavior uh, class. If they wanted my attention, if they wanted, uh, I mean, if, if there was food there, right? Because a lot of the time we would use an oral uh, reinforcement. They would get, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I don't... I don't think we ever used candy, but there could be, um, it could be an oral reinforcement. It could be just a reinforcement where you pat them on the back, and that's what it would lead up to. Basically, you would use a physical reinforcement, and then you would slowly deplete that physical uh, reinforcement and replace it with, you know, a pat on the back or a, a that's the way to go or that's giving a positive reinforcement, okay, a verbal reinforcement, as opposed to an oral reinforcement like a, um, a candy or a bag of chips or whatever it may be, okay? So there would be that change. And what I'm basically saying is that you have to kind of give them some type of reinforcement that is going to bring about a positive change. You can't give a child that's learning how to deal with their behaviors, you can't give them a negative reinforcement like say, oh, that was so stupid that you thought that in the first place or that you did that. Wasn't that stupid that you did that? That's giving them a negative reinforcement. A positive reinforcement would be, I am so glad that you did that. Way to go. Positive, right? A positive reinforcement instead of saying, well, you were stupid for doing that in the first place. How is that a positive reinforcement, right? And we're talking relationships. We're talking behaviors. We're talking like it's a wide gamut of things, okay? So what you put out, you get back. If you're putting out negativity, you're going to get that negativity back. If you're putting out aggression, you're going to get that aggression back. And that could be verbal, that could be a physical altercation, that could be a lot of things, as with what we're witnessing now with a lot of the riots and protests that are going on, okay? Now, what it says is that, and I'm, I wrote notes from the video that I watched, and I'll post the video down below because I really think, um, I think it's an amazing channel, or amazing channel, amazing channel. But this is based on a book written by a fellow by the name of Vadim Salim, and he's talking about um, realities and how to manifest positive realities in your life, okay? So not letting circumstances passively drag you into or actively direct your life toward negativity. You want it to direct your life toward your desires, okay? What do you want to create? So there's two things, right? What do you want to create and what do you want to achieve, right? So let's look at these protests. What do you want to create? You want to create what? Um, delve into the uh, the uh, protests that you are witnessing in your life and, and look at it factually. What do they look or what do they want to achieve? 
and how do they want to achieve it? Do they want to achieve it by violence? Do they want to achieve it by control, total control? Or do they want to achieve it by a more peaceful, uh, sublime uh, method, okay? A method that is not going to create that negativity because that pendulum swings both ways. If you give off negativity, you're going to get it back. If you give off aggression, you are going to get it back. So be aware of that. Now, there, it does talk about a flow of variations of different ways that you can deal with situations in your life where you bring about positive change, okay? I'll give you an example. I lost 75 pounds. Okay. The reason I had gained that 75 pounds was because I was taking cal calcium channel lockers for my heart issues. Now, I had a choice to make. Do I continue to take this medication that is making me overweight? And what was my goal? My goal was to lose 75 pounds, but also to keep myself alive, to take care of my health, right? So I focused on how can I replace that medication? What can I replace that medication with? So I turned to holistics and I had to build it up in my system. So I wasn't able to quit the medication that the doctors had given me right, right away. I had to build up the holistics in my body. And so what I did is I tapered off the medications that I was taking and I replaced those that little bit of tapering off with the holistic method. But I did it over a period of time where I was able, able to basically wean myself off all, all medications. Now it took me about a year, it took me about a year, but that was one of my um, ways of changing um, the reaction that I was getting from my body. So I went holistic. And along with because of that variation that I made in a pattern in taking the medications and being so reliant on the medications and basically not exercising, okay, just just not exercising. I had to change. I had to vary my lifestyle. I had to change my lifestyle. So I started exercising. I started working out at the gym. I got myself um, a fitness coach in the first part of my journey. And I'm so sorry that I deleted my channel, my first videos, because there were so many videos that would have helped would have helped in many ways, many uh, aspects, okay? But I deleted it. And so what I had to do is I changed my lifestyle. I started exercising. I made sure that I stayed away from the foods that were creating inflammation. I made sure that I was very vigilant on taking my vitamins and my nutrients and my minerals that I needed to replenish those things that had been messed up in my body. So the big thing for me was I had to replace um, my probiotics in my gut because I truly, truly believe. And, you know, my... my um, thought process and my beliefs changed. It changed. Everything changed, not just my physical aspect of my life and what I did, but my thought pattern, what I believed. At one point in time, I would have trusted a doctor with my life. And my pattern, my belief pattern changed. So I thought, you know what? I don't completely agree with everything you're preaching me, so I'm going to go this direction. And I changed my thought pattern. Okay? And I believe that I could bring my body back into balance without the chemicals. And I did that. I did that. So there's a lot of things. Okay, so, you know, being willing to adapt to a different reality in your life. I mean, there might be a point of time in my life where I'm actually going to have to revert back to that and to change my reality again. But at this point in time, my reality is moving forward in a more natural, holistic way. Now, there may be times when, you know, we kind of slip up and, you know, I'm low income. So what I'm telling you is there might be a couple of times that, you know, I have to eat uh, bread. I have to eat the trans fats. I have to eat the things that I have, right? So you adapt to your situation. You adapt to what's taking place in your life. You change the things that you can change. But a lot of the times we have to backslide. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you quit. It just means that you might be some times where, you know, I might have to eat some more carbs, right? And so what do I do to combat that? So this is what I do. I'll tell you what I do. So there are vitamins and nutrients. So I take a vitamin B1. And what vitamin B1 does is it literally... Um, takes those carbs and it changes it into energy in your body, okay? So it gets rid of the sugars and the carbs that you, you eat 
by turning it into energy. And so what I do is if I have a meal where I know that I'm going to, because that's all I have, right? It's an altered reality where if all I have is carbs, fries, or uh, rice, or bread, if that's all I have and that's what I have to eat to survive, what I will do is I will alter that reality by taking a B1 because the B1 will get rid of those extra sugars that I had to eat. See what I'm saying? So I have to, I change up my reality. And that's not really slipping. That's not really slipping on it. That's using, um, adapting to the situation and move, still moving forward on it. Okay, so that's just an important thing to, to kind of say. So it, it talks about temporarily deviating from a path. So temporarily deviating. So I had to eat the sugar to stay alive because I had no food. So all I had was, um, okay, we won't use sugar because I don't eat sugar, but um, let's see, um, carbs, right? So rice, all I had was rice or potatoes to eat with, with my meal and I was hungry. So what I had is I had the rice or I had the potatoes and those were carbs. So then I would take a vitamin B1, which would convert that starch in the rice to energy and get it out of my body quicker. Now you can do this also with emotional aspects of your life, not just physical, like I'm talking about, but emotional aspects of your life, okay? Aspects caused by stress, negative emotions, external influences, things that are happening that are gonna bring about that temporary detour but it's not a permanent destination, okay? So keep focused on your desire, your, your desired variation that you have to deal with, okay? To return to the course that you choose to bring into existence in your life, that's not a, a sign of failure. That's a sign of strength. It shows that you're able to look at a situation in a certain way and, you know, kind of find a way around it. Find a way around that obstacle. That's not a negative aspect. Most important thing to remember, when you wake up in the morning, wake up with that positive mindset, okay? So the best time to set a path or a destination or um, to set your day in stone, okay, is to say, you know what? Today is going to be a good day. Set that day. Today is going to be a good day. I'm excited about today. Today I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So set a plan in place. Set your intentions. Put your intentions out in, in the universe. I'm going to have a wonderful day. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Uh, even if it's snowing, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go for a walk in the snow. I'm going to enjoy the changing of the seasons. Put that into the universe, okay? Make a list of your desires. What do you want to achieve in life? Be specific. Be specific, okay? So, um, and this is basically, I'm not saying to do this every day. I'm saying to wake up in the morning and kind of put the intention in the universe and say, you know what, today is going to be a good day. I'm going to enjoy my time spent with friends or family or my pet, or I'm going to enjoy going for a walk, or I'm going to stop and have a coffee and enjoy the, the holiday season, okay? So that's the intention. But when you're talking about manifesting stuff in your life, okay, manifesting positive things in your life, set your intention as you would do in the morning, set your intentions. Make a list of your desires. What do you want to achieve in your life? Be specific, okay? Just like when, when I pray. I'm very specific when I pray for something. If I want to manifest something and I'm praying to my divine, my belief um, system, I would be very specific. I want to manifest uh, a car. I want um, a Volkswagen, and this is something that I truly want. I want a blue-gray Volkswagen with a convertible top. The little old kind of like Herbie bug, I, I picture it in my mind. And I, I do, I picture myself driving it. Now, I'm not too sure if I drive it in the wintertime because they're like that high off the ground, but that is something that I want to manifest. That's something that I want. A tiny home. I want a tiny home with a little garden on the side. Um, I, I know exactly what I want it to look like inside. And I'll tell you something. It truly works. And this has happened to me many occasions in my life, okay? Twice that I can recall. And I'm going to tell you them right now. So my children were little and I was married. And we were living in a home that was, you know, it was in a place they used to call Shacktown. 
and it was a an old building that now the landlord was very good about renovating it but it was still old and it had like you know the old paneling on the walls and you know it was cold it was kind of like an impersonal place it was like it was old it was an old building and there was a home across the road that uh, was brick on the front it had a front face that was brick and a beautiful backyard and where we lived we didn't have a big yard for the kids to play in so a lot of the times i had to take them to the park and stuff and i wanted a home that i could i wanted a home so bad that i could have the kids outside that i could build them a tree fort that type of thing and guess what across the road this home that came available for sale had a brick a brick face it had a big picture window in the front which i always loved i always loved big backyard lots of room to build um, a tree fort for the kids and i remember saying to my husband at the time i remember saying i want that we're going to get that we're going to live in that we're moving into that house we are going to we are going to live there and i am going to build a tree fort that's where we're going with our children and you know what you know what we did it we bought it we bought it we bought it and we got it really cheap got a really good deal we got along really good with the uh the landowner i mean while we were in that home things went down the wrong way um, our marriage broke apart uh, and the circumstances are no one's uh business but ours okay but our marriage broke apart but that that took a variation of that in a new direction okay but what i'm focused on right now for you to tell you is that i remember looking across and saying to my husband we're going to live there we're going to we're going to manifest that that's going to be ours and you know what it was we did it we did it we put a bid in on it and we got it simple as that we got it and what did i do I built a tree for it. I built a tree house for my kids in the backyard and we lived there for quite a period of time. Um, and the kids loved their tree fort. It was a beautiful home. We had a full basement. It was, I had a sunken living room. I, it was like, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. So don't think you can't manifest what it is that you see in your mind's eye. Okay. You just have to want it hard enough you have to want it bad enough and you have to be very specific i knew exactly what it is that i wanted and i got it i got it i prayed for it i manifested it and i wanted it that bad now let's go back let's go to many years later after my marriage had dissolved and i was working my kids were all gone the kids were all gone. I was on my own. It was just me. I was having a hard time financially. I was, at one point in time, I was homeless. It was, it was very, very difficult for me, okay? Always had a job, but there was a couple of times where I was homeless, right? Well, I remember working at this one particular job, and um, I was working at that point in time, I think it's a PSW. That's a personal support care worker. And I was working... Um, in i think it was a long-term care unit and i didn't really get along with my co-workers and i was a very hard worker so they would you know and i and i needed the money so i would take as many hours as i could get and trust me they gave me those hours they gave them to me even when i didn't need them or when i didn't want them when i didn't ask for them i was overworked and i was exhausted i was overwhelmed and i remember i remember this like yesterday like yesterday there was a I was looking well I was outside and I, at that point in time I smoked and I smoked heavy so on my break up break I was outside smoking and I was talking to somebody and I said no one I'm sick of this shit I'm sick of working for for little wages I'm sick of having to be exhausted when I get home and I was staying with a friend I didn't even have a home I was staying with a friend and I said, I'm sick of this. I want to be the boss. I want to be the boss for a change. I want to send someone else out to do the dirty work. And I want to be the boss. And I wanted it so bad. <laughs> Trust me, so, so bad. I wanted it so bad. Yeah. But you don't get a different job. Somebody's not just going to pop around and, and say, hey, I'm looking for so-and-so. I'm going to give them a job. You have to apply for the jobs, right? And that's what I'm talking about with this whole spiel here is that if you, you can't just say it without putting the action into it, without putting the effort into it. Okay. So 
I said that at work on my smoke break. I finished the day. I went home. I went on uh, the computer and I applied to a job that I just like <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to go into um, indeed.ca which is where I found the job okay I didn't even get a chance to really open it because I opened up my computer to my email and I had received a notice because I had put you know where you um, you click to get all the notices for certain jobs in specific areas <laughs> damn so this is how quick it happened. I said it at work. I went home that night. I was looking for jobs. So I turned on my computer and up pops indeed.ca with a particular job that was for what? As an office manager. Mm -hmm. An office manager. And I applied. I applied. Bang, right away. Two days later, after I, you know, continued my job, gone back to my job. Two days later, I received a reply for an interview. So I went in for the interview. I went in for the interview and I didn't even have to complete the interview. I didn't even have to complete it, really. I did give my references, which were amazing references. I gave my references and guess what? I got the job before I even left the office. I had the job. So I started that very week. So I quit my other job that was like wearing me down and exhausting me. And I started this new job. Now realize I have to survive until I get my first paycheck. So I started this new job. And, you know, I had the help of friends um, who helped me out. Uh, I had a friend who let me stay for free at their home and fed me and made sure I had a right to work because at that point I didn't have my car. And so, you know, they were very... Um, honorable and they helped me in a in a, a massive way massive way but I also had to put the effort in right so I manifested the job I got the job it was only supposed to be as an office manager and what did it end up turning into because you know what I, w I remember thinking and I was still smoking so it was another smoke break and I was outside thinking this is boring I want to do something with a little bit more oomph I want to be like I want to have meetings and I want to, I want, I want to put more effort in. I want to be acknowledged more, right? <laughs> You're not going to believe this, but it's a true story. It's a true story. I swear. I swear. It's a true story. The next day I had a meeting with my boss and I then became known as a program developer. Now, in my field, program developer is pretty high up. And I would, I, I manifested it because it's what I wanted. But I also put the effort into it by speaking to my boss about the fact that I wanted a title. I wanted to be in charge of something. I wanted to be the boss, the one that people looked up to. I deserved it. I put a lot of effort in to my career and to my education. And I did it many times on my own, right? With, with no help from anybody else, right? There was a lot of times of my education... I worked blood, sweat, and tears for my education, trust me, trust me, many, many ways. So I put the effort in by speaking to my boss about it, and you know what? I achieved it. I achieved it because it's something that I wanted, right? I became a program developer for a company where I would send workers out to specific agencies, to specific, uh, specific long-term care units, to specific... Um, retirement homes like I was in charge of sending instead of being the PSW I was in charge of sending the PSWs and the nurses and uh, geez we had so many uh, different avenues that we delved into that I was in charge of all these things and not only that I was in charge of meetings yeah so I would have a meeting with uh, what do they call it chamber of commerce yeah, so I would I would speak on the behalf of my company at a meeting for the Chamber of Commerce, and I would meet and I would um, have influence and I would form contacts. So I had a contact list that grew pretty fast, pretty quickly. Okay, and that contact contact list gave different avenues that my company could go down to achieve success in to just to achieve success financially for the company, okay? And that list of contacts was worth a lot of money to them, 
but it was worth a lot to me also. And so, you know, I saved that contact list. And, you know, when I finally decided to leave that area and I moved to a new area to be closer to my family, that contact list helped me get a job in another company. So um, you manifest what you put the effort into, okay? So I'm not just going to put it in the universe and say, it would be like saying, okay, I'm going to win the lottery but then I don't buy a ticket, it's the same thing, right? You have to put the effort in. If you want to manifest something, if you want to achieve something, you have to put the energy in. And here's another thing about energy. You can suck up the energy of other people, okay? So if you are in an environment, a work environment, a home environment, a relationship, whatever it may be, if you are in a negative energy, Okay? You're going to absorb that negative energy. If you're with someone who's always thinking negative, that they're never going to achieve, that it's never going to work, then you know what? You're going to believe that. And that's going to be something that you put into the universe. And so that's what it's saying. Other negative energy will drain your soul's energy. You will become tired, unmotivated, sick. So you got to put out and absorb that good energy, that positive energy, okay? So it talks about protecting your emotional energy. Protect your emotional energy, but give off positive energy also. And you know, it's kind of like parenting, okay? It's like parenting. So if you give off that negative energy and you give off those negative critiques of your children or of your spouse, okay? You're going to manifest those things into your environment. If you believe that your marriage is no good, if you believe that your relationship is no good, if you believe that your children are, are idiotic and they won't amount to anything, you're going to manifest that. You know how you're going to manifest that? You're going to teach them that they don't have the capabilities to move forward in life, okay? You want to manifest positive things in their life. Because you know what? That's a reflection of who you are as a parent, even though that mightn't sound fair. A lot of the times, it's true. We manifest in our children what we teach them. We learn what we're taught in school, in our relationships, in whatever aspect of our life. If you don't put the energy out that is positive, you're not going to get a positive result. So just remember that as you're moving into the future and as you're manifesting the positive things in your life, okay? Be specific, but also put the energy out that is going to manifest those positive things and bring balance into your life. So just letting you know. I shall see you in the next video. The good Lord be willing. Namaste. Bye.